Hi everyone, I'm here to talk you through Grisalinia Lucida, which is one of the tracks off my recent album, Room Tones. What you're seeing on your screen at the moment is software called Bitwig. I don't really think I'm going to be saying that much that's specific to Bitwig if you make electronic music. Um, I'm pretty sure most of what I'm doing here will be applicable in whatever software or hardware you're using. So what I'll talk about first I guess is the harmonic aspects of this and then I'll talk a bit through each track and basically explain what I got up to. Some of the stuff I've bounced it down to audio so I actually can't remember what I originally did but I think we'll be all good. So this track is kind of in an ambiguous key which is pretty normal practice for me. So at the start what you hear you've got these Rhodes chords and these Rhodes chords are in C sharp Lydian. So they're basically going from a C sharp major seven to what's that one? A C minor. Um, yeah, C minor seven. So it's just alternating those two chords throughout. And then that's Rhodes piano like that. And then on uh, under that. The bass notes, or sorry, I mean not bass in the sense of B-A-S-S, but you know, the notes underlying all of this, it's actually in, I guess, the relative minor of that, so if we were in C-sharp Lydian, then what's this doing? This is, uh, uh, I don't even know what you call that chord, but basically it's like A-sharp minor, but with a raised 5, so it's a minor 6, or, or sharp 5, whichever way you'd look at that. Um, I look at it as a flat six. So, yeah, so we've got these two things happening, and this is a kind of totally cliche thing for me to be doing, basically. I'm always just sort of mixing things up so that it's not super clear where the um, tonic is or um, what the kind of key center should be. Um, then lurking under that, we've got a bass line, and the bass line is a whole two notes, so it's just going from that C sharp, which would be the root note of the C sharp Lydian, down to the A sharp, which is the root of the A sharp minor. So really basic, just going from uh, the root of the major, uh, sorry, root of the major scale to root of the relative minor, or if you like, it's just going to the um, six, which is. Yeah, super super normal stuff um, and th there's very very little other harmonic information in there I guess um, I was slightly surprised I've got something over here which in my notes I've said is A sharp minor which doesn't actually match the key of everything else but that's also a classic move for me that I accidentally put in something else that um, is a different you know a different, a different key or a different tuning um, so these Things very muffled. But they're apparently in A sharp minor. And I'll go into some more details of the other stuff as we get to it, I guess. Um, so, what you hear at the start, we've got that sweeping pad and we've got the roads. So um, first off we've got an FM synth and this is just a um, free VST plugin called Dext um, and Dext as per the name is basically a ripoff of the DX series of Yamaha synths so DX7 being the classic. And I'll take out the road. But that underlying thing is it's literally the same notes for the entire track. And what I'm doing here is modulating some of the different operators um, in terms of FM synthesis. Um, I'm not even going to pretend that I really know how FM synthesis works or what I'm actually doing here, but basically I messed around with um, uh, these are LFOs that are being sent into a sample and hold. So essentially, an LFO uh, going at a relatively fast pace, it's being captured. Um, every time a new note plays, so basically every time that pad plays, it's capturing the value at the start of that bar. So basically, at the start of when those notes played, it's choosing a value, 
and it's modulating something in here about the sound. Um, and I'm doing that twice over. Um, but I'll be honest that I don't know what operator 3 EG rate means, but I'm changing something in these in these levels for operator 3 over here, which is slightly changing that sound. Um, and then that's just going into a delay. Um, there's nothing to say really about that delay. It's just a stereo delay um, dotted. Um, yeah. So the Rhodes... Whoop. The Rhodes isn't really doing much. Um, it's just a sampled Rhodes piano. Um, that Rhodes piano is running into a tremolo, uh, a phaser, and a chorus. In terms of third-party plugins, I've used Audio Things Reels, which I really love. It's a tape emulation. Um, I use this a lot. And yeah, it's not really doing anything special, but it, as, as per what I said, it's a tape emulation. So it gives it that kind of wobbly, tired kind of feel. <laughs> um, basically stops it from sounding so clean. Uh, then the next thing we've got at the start of the track, I'm just kind of keeping in the order of what you hear first, is the beats. So the beats, if I turn everything off, the beats are one of those things where um, I exported something um, based on uh, some previous effects, and I honestly can't remember what I was doing. Um, but basically they are chopped up 808 beats, so that's why it has that kind of hardcore trap feel. Oh. And what I'm doing here is I've basically applied some effects to two different recordings. One of them is much more chopped up, so it's um, what I've got saved as glitchier bits, and the other one is much more stable. And what I'm doing using Bitwix modulation is um, I'm basically just muting. So I'm basically gating um, the main loop to introduce the glitchier bits on top. So basically, um, it's pretty much like a crossfader, like cutting back and forth between a straighter version of the beat and the glitchier version of the beat. So once I turn all the effects chain off, this is the audio as I recorded it. My memory is I was messing around with um, the free plugins that are provided by Reaper on Reaper's website, which is Kokos. Um, yeah, I, I assume that's how you say it. And on, um, they basically give away some of the base Reaper effects as VST plugins. And my memory is that I was using some of those and creating this thing with this massive stereo separation if you're listening on headphones, like it's really wide. And what you can see or hear is that it's only playing when, uh, oh sorry, it cuts out whenever this, this comes up, when you see gaps in here. And then the glitchier version generally fills those gaps, but with some overlap. And the reason I really like doing this is because I do really like some randomization. So in the glitchier stuff, I've definitely basically just left stuff to be chopped up in a really sort of, you know, inhuman not at all kind of funky kind of a way but I also believe that music is fundamentally about a kind of a tension between an organized pattern that your brain can get it sort of into um, or your body you know that you can get the feel of versus that kind of randomization or a chance that sort of takes it somewhere where you're not expecting and so what I'm trying to do here is basically the main loop is setting some certainty so it's basically saying you know first um, whatever this is so seven seven beats of the sequence just play them straight every time um, and typically I'm letting the one of every bar land normally but then I'm cross fading into the glitchier stuff when it's on sort of um, off beats or towards the end of each bar which I think kind of more naturally mirrors the feel of how a drummer plays where normally you're kind of adding fills and things towards the end of a phrase rather than on the one, which, you know, is pretty random or pretty unmusical, I guess, in, in a traditional sense. 
So then I'm taking those two layers and I'm putting them through a set of effects up here, which in Bitwig you do by just grouping them. So it's basically putting everything into one audio channel. And then I've got this chain of effects down the bottom. So the first thing I'm doing is basically just narrowing the width because everything was so massively wide in terms of the stereo. So that's just bringing it in. This amp preset is basically making it sound more like it's running through sort of um, a um, telephone or, you know, like a little um, sort of public address system in a school or something. The next thing is a plugin, third party plugin. This is um, um, Melda Productions um, multi band convolution, which I really like. Um, nowadays, I'd probably just use the built in convolution reverb you get in Bitwig, but basically, yeah, this is convolving the sound. Pretty hard to hear what it's doing, but it's basically adding a kind of clickiness and a sort of slapback kind of feel. And then, um, this is just an EQ. And all that's doing is it's just a, you know, super, super steep low cut just chopping the very bottom off the beat because there's basically no need to have that energy in the mix it's not really going to help anything the bass as in the bass line is the thing that's actually occupying that space so there's you know I'm, I'm often a fan of just kind of chopping the low end out when you don't need it so yeah so that's the start of the track where will i go next so down the bottom what i've got is another kind of classic me thing is a series of three different MIDI clips of different lengths which are all being sent to the one instrument. So this is a shimmering kind of um, sine wave that fades in slowly through the track so it's arriving by about two minutes and you're getting this quite loudly. Have you seen that Bill Bailey video where he does the edge playing guitar and then he turns all the effects off? This is how I'm feeling. Sorry, what I'm doing here is I've literally got a sine wave and I'm sending three different sequences of just a few notes in different um, meters, so different length loops, um, which are sending to here to kind of create this pattern that doesn't particularly settle down. It's really, really simple harmonically. Um, so if we think about being in um, A sharp minor or B flat minor, but anyway, I always think in sharps because I'm used to just keyboards that tell you that. Um, yep, we've just got A sharp on a couple of octaves. And that's a seven beat phrase. And then, oof, where are my notes? Uh, then we've got the minor third on two different octaves. And that's nine eighths long, I think it is. Yeah, yep. So it's kind of like four and a half beats. And then this one, oh right, this is seven as well, but it's just faster, so it's seven eight rather than seven four. Um, and that's going from the fifth to the fourth. So really, really, really simple. Um, and we've got to the point now where I basically strip out each layer at the end, so we end up coming down. So that was just hammering the um, the C sharp at the end there. Um, things are fading in, so that, that fades in in terms of the volume overall. Um, it switches up an octave at one point, but it's basically too early in the track for you to really hear that. And I'm just opening up the filter on a low pass filter. Um, on the sine waves as we go. So to go back to the sound design of this, so what I'm then feeding it to is another copy of that Reels 
plugin. So again, it's a tape emulation, gives it sort of saturation, gives it kind of warbliness. And then dearest, dearest Valhalla. I absolutely love Valhalla DSP. This is their free, well, it's in the name, super massive reverb. So you see here the mix is completely wet. So frankly, um, Valhalla DSP and their free plugins were really doing the lifting on this track. Um, yeah, basically makes that sound a lot nicer. So yeah, so that's just let that fade. That's a you know kind of shimmering sound that comes in later in the track. So the next thing that stands out for me is that reversed sound, so let's talk about that. Um, so that reversed sound is loaded into a drum machine, and so the drum machine is basically just playing slices of this audio. Um, I bounced down these individual sounds, and I can't remember how to play each one back, but I'm sending those into yet another free plugin. This should be an ad for free VSTs. Sick. So if I remember rightly, this is actually me plucking a ukulele, but I might be wrong. Um, and so this is just obviously an ascending scale. And then the main thing I'm doing here is I'm sending this into one of those free plugins by Kokos, so the ones that come with Reaper, but that you can download um, for free as well. And I'm sending it into this setting um, called Floaty which I've just abused far too often over the years. Um, it's just another freebie that I've gone back and played with. What I am doing with this though, is I'm modulating uh, the tempo synchronization of this delay. So basically it's a, like a reverse delay, so it's kind of flipping the signal and then offsetting it by however many 30 second beats. So when it's at 24, that's like, you know, um, oh, come on, Matt. <laughs> when it's at 24, then it's 12 16th beats, right? So it's like three crotchets. Um, so yeah, so it's just jumping around between different values and basically um, it's almost working like a kind of beat repeater. It's like shifting the glitchy sound forward and back in time. This, um, this setting up here is actually showing the delay time in milliseconds, so although it's actually being modulated by shifting it um, in a kind of synchronized amount, um, that actually kind of tells you what the end result is, and it kind of gives you a feel for what's happening. Yeah, good times. This also gives you an idea of how long uh, the reboot or oh, delay tails are there because that had actually finished eight bars ago and we could still hear it. Or four bars, I think it might have been. Yeah, so that, that, those blocks, um, they fade in throughout um, and then fade out at the end there. There is a bit where I shift the pitch on the drum machine. So um, basically by default it had all been pitched up, and then when I get to here it actually turns down, so basically all I'm doing is just dropping everything by an octave for the end. Yeah, so last run through those reversed sounds are all um, down an octave from the start. Sweet! 
page. Okay, so then up the top, uh, the thing that are called vinyl ping notes. I really don't remember what this was, to be frank. Um, so if I turn off the whole chain of effects on this, it's something that I, you know, converted, I've captured through various effects. Pretty quiet. <laughs> But I honestly don't remember what I was doing there. And then I've got a filter, modulated low pass filter. So that's three different LFOs that are all messing with the cutoff, but in different um, speeds. I'm a really big fan. I'm a bit too kind of um, obsessive to um, use pure randomization because one of the things I don't like about randomization is that if something's just totally random then it's not ever going to sound the same when you play back the track and I really like to kind of get things to a point that when I play it each time I actually know how it's going to sound or you know um, it's not going to change basically. So instead I'm doing something where I'm basically making the modulation so complicated that a person couldn't predict what's happening. One of the things I'm definitely doing there is I'm modulating the speed of one LFO using another LFO. So that's why you can see the kind of bouncing ball uh, down on this filter, actually changing directions. So the cutoff is being modulated by that first LFO, but then the speed of the LFO is being modulated by a second one. So that's a classic way to make something that may as well be random from a listener's perspective because there's no way you can hear a pat. You know, you can't you can't listen to it and go, oh yeah, of course that's what's going on. But it's um, always going to play back exactly the same way every time I stop and start. So then, if I start again on that, um, so then these effects go from a filter just into an EQ. Once again, I'm just chopping off the low end because again, that's kind of unnecessary energy in the mix. Um, compressor. Another Valhalla, um, this is their Vintage Verb, so it's just a Reverb VST, totally recommend any of their products. And that just, yeah, I just love that kind of space, it's just really nice. And then I'm just adding um, just a classic kind of 8th beat delay on top. So I hope you enjoyed that, that's pretty much everything that's happening in the track um, and it's quite, I think, quite typical of how I work where basically I'm building stuff up based on loops I normally start a track with a whole set of clips just going round and round and round um, and I've really got into the way Bitwig enables modulation of effects and modulation of pretty much any element so basically I configure a series of um, if you like kind of mini processes that are evolving a loop so that the loop doesn't actually happen the same way each time and then I might use automation to actually shift the modulation amounts rather than sitting around for ages with these you know modulation envelopes like drawing out all of these things with the mouse which is pretty exhausting so yeah that's Grisolinea Lucida by Jet Jaguar and that's me enjoy <laughs> <laughs>